Welcome back. Uh, the goal of this short video is to give you a very brief overview of the last part of the Acts of the Apostles, Acts chapter 21 through 28, and it would probably be helpful to have your uh, chronology of Paul's life and letters that I handed out as we go, because you'll, you'll start to see some of these epistles that are being written during this time. A couple of them we've already covered, but, but hopefully that'll, that'll help you put them into, into more historical context. So the years that we're dealing with here are the latter part of the year 58, uh, up through the end of Acts, uh, as Paul is imprisoned in Rome, and you know what happens there after you know, 63 or so, uh, we don't uh, exactly know. We have we have tradition, which I'll I'll speak of. But really, those uh, five years or so at the end of Acts. So if you have your your scriptures open to uh, Acts 21, you see the third missionary journey come to an end where Paul goes to Jerusalem, and he knows what's going to happen there when he's there. Uh, he's going to, of course, be pursued by the Jews, uh, and he's going to be, to be arrested. Remember, at, uh, at his conversion, what our Lord Christ told Ananias, that he would show uh, Saul how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So this is really Paul's passion march. What is true of Jesus is uh, true of Paul. We also start to hear some of the names that are written at the end of Paul's epistles. So you can start to put the epistles together with what's happening in Acts. So very important texts here. So again, this is not an exhaustive study. This is a, a very brief overview uh, just to walk you through this text. So uh, Paul arrives then in Jerusalem and you see where he goes from there. Uh, chapter 21 verse 8. On the next day we departed and came to Caesarea. We entered the house of Philip the evangelist. We, we know him and uh, he was one of the seven and stayed with him. Uh, talks about his family. And again, verse 12, when we heard this and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Again, he knows what's going to happen once he's there. They know what's going to happen when he's there. Remember in the Gospels, uh, specifically in John's Gospel, when it is written in John chapter 10 that and, well, going back to John chapter 8 as well, that um, the Jews want to kill Jesus. Chapter 8, chapter 10. He leaves uh, Jerusalem after chapter 10. They're at the Feast of um, Dedication. So they leave Jerusalem because they're trying to kill Jesus. He goes to uh, Bethany in chapter 11 where uh, Lazarus and Martha and Mary were. Lazarus was dead. But when Jesus, when they're away and Jesus says, let's go back uh, to Judea, Thomas says, no, they're, they're, they're trying to kill you. Why would, we, why would we go back? And, uh, of course, they, they do. And the, the response is, well, let's, let's go to our death too. They're going to kill you there. They're going to kill us there. So this is what uh, the people are doing with the Apostle Paul as well. So once he gets to Jerusalem, Paul does go and visit James, of course, James. Uh, this is not the James who was killed earlier in Acts. This is uh, different, uh, different James. And uh, sees him there. And of course, once Paul is in the temple, chapter 21, beginning with verse 27, uh, the whole crowd was stirred up and laid hands on him. So again, remember and we're, uh, we're coming very near, if you're, uh, of course, watching this right when it comes up, we're, we're getting very near to Holy Week. So you're going to be hearing all of these accounts of 
Jesus in Jerusalem, Jesus with the crowds, the crowds getting stirred up. It's the same kind of language here. Uh, so, men of Israel, help. This is the man who is teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law in this place. Moreover, he even brought Greeks into the temple and defiled this holy place. For They had previously seen Trophimus the Ephesian with him in the city. So, Paul is bringing uh, people around. Uh, but again, they saw him in the city and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. So, bearing false witness against Paul, just like they bore false witness against, uh, against Christ. So, then all the city was stirred up, and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple, and at once the gates were shut, and they were seeking to kill him. All right? So, uh, they all of a sudden see the soldiers. They stop with their beating of Paul, and he was arrested, bound in chains, and some of the crowd were shouting one thing, some another, and as he could not learn the facts because of the uproar, he ordered him to be brought into the barracks. So remember Jesus. <clears throat> Everybody's shouting one thing, uh, and others are, are shouting another thing. And remember when Pontius Pilate kind of pulls Jesus away to question him privately? When he came to the steps, he was actually carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd. For the mob of people followed, followed, crying out, away with him. So it's, it's very, very similar. And, uh, of course, we continue. And what is interesting, so Paul is going to be speaking in Greek and then he's going to be, to be speaking in Hebrew. Paul's story never changes. When it comes time for Paul to bear witness about what has happened to him, he actually does bear witness. And he tells the account of his conversion, of who he was and what happened to him on the way. This story never changes. He always is going to give the same account of his conversion. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Chapter 22, verse 22. Now, up to this word, they listened to him. They raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. As they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barracks, saying he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. When they had stretched him out for the whips. Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? And uh, they have to stop. All right. So they have this discussion about their, their citizenship. And uh, Paul then goes, uh, is going to be sent to the governor. He's going to be sent to Caesarea. Now this is what is different, perhaps, even though Paul is sent to the governor. Uh, Pontius Pilate was the governor during Jesus' day, and he did not usually live in Jerusalem. The only reason he was in Jerusalem was because it was the feast of the Passover. So he would come and he would bring his uh, Roman troops with him in order to um, stop any kind of uprising, uproar. Oftentimes they would do this by uh, you know, crucifying people. Go ahead, you know, go ahead and warn them not to even think about it. But usually the governor would live in Caesarea, uh, Caesarea Maritime, Caesarea by the sea. This was the city that Herod the Great built for Caesar Augustus. We talked about this earlier in the semester, how Herod the Great had kind of joined forces with Mark Antony, thinking that he was going to be the triumphant one to come out of that second triumvirate. Mark Antony had been with Cleopatra, and uh, of course that didn't happen. Octavian, or Augustus, was the one who was triumphant out of that second triumvirate and became the first Roman emperor, Caesar Augustus. Back to the birth of Jesus, remember? 
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree. Uh, so in order to gain favor with Caesar Augustus and not be put to death as he should have by siding with his enemy, um, Herod the Great built this great seaport city, naming it after Caesar Augustus, Caesarea, Maritime, Caesarea, by the sea, huge seaport, uh, lighthouse, city was made of marble, a uh, couple of hippodromes, a uh, grand theater, and of course the governor's headquarters. So this is where Pontius Pilate, uh, years ago, there was there was a stone with the ins- with the inscription. It ha- actually had Pontius Pilate's name in it, written just outside of this place. Uh, that stone is on display at the uh, Jerusalem Museum, Israel Israel Museum, and a replica sits at that site today. But this would have been the headquarters of um, Felix, and and afterward. Uh, Festus, so Felix, Paul is sent to him, and uh, this is there in the fall of 58 to the spring of 60. This is when he's going to be writing the letter to Philemon and uh, the letter um, to the Christians, to the Colossian Christians, right? So he's sent to Felix and uh, there he is imprisoned, but he is, you know, given this, given this freedom. So, uh, chapter twenty-four of the Acts of the Apostles, uh, you know, Paul is there before Felix, uh, giving his account once again. And here's the important thing, right? You wonder how Paul, because at the end of his letters, he's talking about how all of these people are with him, not necessarily imprisoned with him, but you know he's, he's given freedom. So have a look here. Interesting. Chapter 24, verse 22. But Felix, having a rather accurate knowledge of the way, that is the Christians, put them off saying, when Lysias the tribune comes, I will decide your case. Then he gave orders to the centurion that he should be kept in custody, but have some liberty, and that none of his friends should be prevented from attending to his needs. Well, what are Paul's needs? Well, he tells us at the end of some of these letters, of course, these are later on when he's in Rome, but his needs are, he needs his coat, he needs parchment. After some days, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish. So this is how Felix is kind of knowledgeable of uh, the Jews and of the early Christians. His wife is Jewish. So again, these are the, these are the sections of the scriptures that unfortunately uh, people tend to skip over. Right? Once you start to get names and, and new names, uh, that, you know, we, uh, that's not... Not important. No, those aren't the words of Jesus, so we'll skip over it. But but it is very important. So, notice Felix's motivation. He says, go away for the present. When I get an opportunity, I will summon you. Verse 26. At the same time, he had hoped that money would be given to him by Paul. So he wants some sort of bribe. No, oh, right, let me go. Or do this or do that for me. Give me freedom and, you know, I'll give you some money. So he sent for him often and conversed with him. So notice, see how these ungodly ones, God is actually bringing them into discussion about the faith, about the resurrection of Christ, even though they have bad motivations. They want money, but they're continuing to have these conversations Um and potentially have their heart turned. So here, I said I said 58 to 60. Look, it says, When two years had elapsed, Felix was succeeded by uh, Portius Festus, and desiring to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. So, um, so Festus takes over for Felix. Uh, Emperor Nero, Caesar Nero, um, liked... Festus uh, over Felix. So he, uh, this is in the year 60. Uh, So 
he replaces uh, Felix there. Now, <clears throat> more trials. Festus is new to the scene. What's going on here? So, Festus is hearing Paul's account, and again, same thing, but here's what Paul says, verse 12. Then Festus, who had conferred with after his counsel, answered, To Caesar you have appealed, to Caesar you shall go. So Paul desires to go to Rome. He, uh, he wants to plead his case before Emperor Nero. Um, th things have to get pretty, pretty rough for you to find that a better place for you is before Nero, right? Uh, but look, Paul is before the governor, and then he goes before Herod Agrippa. Remember, Luke, Luke is writing both his gospel and the Acts of the Apostles. Luke is the only gospel that tells us that Jesus went to Herod after he went to Pontius Pilate. So here, he's before the governor, like Pilate, but he's before Festus, and then he goes before Herod Agrippa. Uh, again, proclaiming the resurrection. Look at verse 25. I found that he had done nothing deserving death. Same kind of thing, back and forth, just like Jesus. And uh, chapter 26, again, he tells of his conversion. Uh, chapter 26, verse 24. And as he was saying these things in his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you're out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you out of your mind. But Paul said, I'm not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, but I'm speaking true and rational words. For the king knows about these things, and to him I speak boldly. For I am persuaded that none of these things has escaped his notice, for this has not been done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. And Agrippa said to Paul, in a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? And Paul said, whether short or long, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me this day might become such as I am, except for these chains. King, the king arose, the governor, and Bernice, all those who were sitting with him. And when they had withdrawn, they said to one another, this man is doing nothing deserving death or imprisonment. And Agrippa said to Festus, this is really heartbreaking. Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. So they're going to send him to Rome. And in chapter 27, uh, that's what happens. He, uh, he appeals to Caesar. To Caesar you have appealed, to Caesar you shall go. And that's what starts chapter 27 and 28 are what is called the fourth missionary journey. Uh, it's not so much a missionary journey as Paul is going to prison, but of course he does his same work. All of his letters have been written at this point with the exception of Philippians. He's going to write Philippians. Uh, then... So, uh, here they go. This gives you the route that they take. There's a storm on the sea. There's a shipwreck. Of course, Paul had been shipwrecked before we learn from 2 Corinthians already. But the, the boat runs aground, and they, but they all make it to sea or to, to land safely. Uh, makes it to Malta. There in 28, finally arriving in Rome, chapter 28, verse 11. After three months, we set sail in a ship uh, that had wintered on the island, a ship of Alexandria with the twin gods as a figurehead. Putting it at Syracuse, we stayed there for three days. So, uh, you know, this gets kind of 
specific in your life and chronology of Paul. Uh, they, they meet at the three taverns. Uh, Paul thanked God and took courage. And when he came to Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier that guarded him. So when we talk about Philippians, we're going to talk very specifically about, about this. So uh, be prepared for Thursday when we talk about, well, not on YouTube, but, uh, but actually in class this time. Uh, so, of course, you, you get the account of Paul there in Rome, a very brief account, and uh, by some accounts, you might say is you know, an unfulfilling ending to the Acts of the Apostles. That it's kind of a, a cliffhanger. Uh, you know, ending this way. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and they will listen. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness, without hindrance. So two years. And again, getting into getting into Philippians, that, you know, the Philippians are the ones who are caring for him in his ministry. Uh you know, all throughout the, the ministry. So for two, for two whole years at his expense, and he's proclaiming the word of God. What happens after that? So he's imprisoned in Rome in, uh, you know, the summer of 61 to the early years of 63. Uh, d- some point during that time, he's writing his letter to the Philippians. And so what happens in 63? Because he's not put to death yet. So he's free. He's there for two years and he's freed. What does he do? Because it, it's, it's not mentioned that Paul dies until the very end of 64 or early 65 because Paul and Peter are dying around, right around the same time. They're being killed right around the same time. So what happens from the year 63 to 65? Um, we don't really know scripturally. We know that Paul, to his letter to the Philippians, talks about wanting to come back and see them. We know he wants to go to Spain. Does he wind up accomplishing this? I don't know. Maybe. Acts doesn't tell us. Uh, Remember, even though it's about the, the, the title of the book is Acts of the Apostles, what is it truly about? What are the Acts of the Apostles? The Acts of the Apostles are them proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus, whether they're in prison or shipwrecked or being beaten or being stoned, like Paul, like Stephen, they're proclaiming the resurrection of the dead. So, we will let that suffice. Uh, We might come back to a few verses on Thursday as we uh, look to the last of the letters that we need to cover. Uh, I I think I misspoke. We still have to cover Ephesians, 2 Timothy, and Philippians. So we'll we'll do that very briefly. But when we look to the end, we'll come across some of those people that Paul is encountering at the ending of Acts. So uh, take this brief video, watch, take notes. If you have questions, bring them to class. And we'll do our best uh, to answer them at that point. Have a great day.